Kyle Theobald here from the DC database, and I'd like to welcome you to the inaugural episode of the Obscure Spotlight. This is a, a series of episodes where we shine a light on characters or, or even books that are kind of obscure and not very well known. And I talk about those characters and why I love them and why, uh, why you should love them. Uh, today's episode, we talk about The Odd Man. Uh, the Odd Man was created by Steve Ditko, and he was scheduled to appear in Shade the Changing Man, issue number nine, uh, back in 1978. But unfortunately, uh, before issue number nine of the Shade the Changing Man could be published, the DC implosion happened, and about 30 titles were canceled by DC all at one time. And all this artwork and these stories had been uh, had been created and was sitting there waiting for something to happen to them. So DC kind of ran all this stuff through the copy machine or whatever they did. And they printed uh, two black and white issues of all of this material just so that they could keep the copyright uh, on all this material. And so what happened was they published these two issues and they called it the canceled comic cavalcade. And the first uh, appearance of odd man appeared in issue number two of, of canceled comic cavalcade. Well, it took him until 1980 to actually get this in a regular book that actually went out to, you know, the, the people and was in an actual issue that people could see. And it came out as a backup story in Detective Comics number 487. And uh, the, the odd man, well, his name is Clay Stoner, which is a really great name for a character. Uh, he's a, a private detective, and he... Uh, lives in River City. He's River City's only hero. Uh, apparently there's not so much crime there that they need more than one hero because the Odd Man seems to take care of it all by himself. Now the, the awesome thing about Odd Man is he has this great costume. It, it, great might be an overstatement. It's actually ridiculous. It's stripes and polka dots and blue and yellow and red and and it's just it's garish and awesome. But uh, he, so he wears this costume and the opening scene that we see, you know, the odd man, he's sitting in his office, except the office is upside down. So he's sitting on the desk, kind of floating in air, and we see this criminal hanging from the window. Like, I don't know if it's the curtains or the bars on the window, but he's hanging from the window in midair, looking at odd man, you know, fear for his life because, you know, what's going on? The office is upside down. I'm hanging in midair from the window towards the, the wall on the other side of the room. So he's, he's just freaked out, doesn't know what to think. And the odd man just starts interrogating him about where these jewels are. So, you know, some of these jewels are missing in River City. And apparently the odd man's decided to, uh, to take the case and track these down. So after he gets a lead from this uh, random fence, uh, he goes to, you know, this uh, museum and he starts doing his private investigator work and he starts tracking down the, the missing jewels. But every time he, he kind of gets there, he stumbles onto, you know, a, a body encased in some kind of crazy plastic solution. He doesn't quite know what's going on. Eventually, he tracks down, you know, who it is, and it's these crazy couple called the Pharaoh and the Queen of the Nile, and they're tracking down the Nile jewels. Apparently, they are actually a real Pharaoh and the real Queen of the Nile, and they've been searching for these jewels for 3,000 years. Um, so anyway, it doesn't go great at first they, they trap him in a sarcophagus but luckily he has this crazy solution that will melt the uh, plastic so he survives the the first encounter um, and uh, somehow he go he kind of tracks him down they were unsuspecting and the Pharaoh accidentally shoots the the queen of the Nile with the plastic gun and of course the first thing he does instead of saying you You've ruined us. I'm going to kill you. He says, no, I've ruined, I've ruined my chance with the love of my life. I'm going to turn the gun on myself and, and turn myself into plastic. So uh, that's it. That's kind of how the story ends. The odd man says, no, it's, it's, oh, it's too late. I didn't stop him. He's dead. And that, that, that's kind of how it ends. You know, lucky break, I guess. He, he saves the day. But, uh, I mean, that was his, uh, his one story at the time. Uh, but, you know, just based on that, it's not that great of a story, but you have the cool, ridiculous, crazy costume. He has these ridiculous gadgets. He has a gun that, that apparently just shoots oil, and he shoots it on the ground, and people slip on it, which is kind of funny, I guess. 
Um, he has a tie that it just kind of extends, and you know he can he has a weight on the end, so he can kind of throw that weighted tie at people. He has a pair of gloves that when he collapses them together, they create dust and smoke. Not not just one, two dust and smoke, and it's apparently used as a distraction. You know, which is pretty great, I guess, if you don't have anything else. But uh, I mean, all this and his crazy, you know, rotating office uh, is enough that, you know, he kind of made an impression because he did appear again. It took nine years. He didn't appear again until 1989, but he popped up in a panel of the Hero Hotline. Just kind of, you know, cameo appearance. He walks into the office of the Hero Hotline. That's it. He doesn't appear again for, uh, you know, about another 10 years. He shows up. Cadmus is looking for a new uh, director of security. Pretty much everybody in the DC universe is uh, attempting to get this job. The Metal Men are there. The Teen Titans are there. Um, Hawk and Dove, you know, Flame Bird. Like, everyone is there. And the Odd Man is there. They're trying to get this job. But he doesn't do anything. He's just kind of hanging out in the background. So all these heroes are kind of competing and showing off their skills. And then they realize that there's actually traitors in the midst and there's villains hiding out. And so all the other heroes kind of get a chance to kind of fight these guys. And you don't even see Odd Man. You know, like, we don't even know what he's doing. He's probably just, like, smoking a cigarette or whatever. Like, yeah, I don't need to deal with this. But once the issue's over and, and they decide, you know, we're going to go in this direction. We're going to hire somebody else. Like, everybody's leaving. And Odd Man's like, well, I don't know. This is more fun than fishing a barrel, but I got to do something crazy, whatever. And, you know, and Superboy's like, man, what an Odd Man. And, and Odd Man walks out on the wall. Like, like, you know, he wasn't crazy enough when he said some weird sentence. He had to walk out on the wall. But apparently that was enough. People were hooked on the odd man. People wanted to see more because, like, another 10 years later, he starts actually showing up a little bit regularly. Uh, he shows up uh, during uh, the Infinite Crisis. He shows up at the Stonehenge when uh, the Spectre kind of goes apeshit crazy and kills people. He's there. Uh, he's later seen uh, in Metropolis during the the big villain battle against the the secret society of supervillains. Uh, he's punching out Onomatopoeia, which is pretty cool. I mean, if you know anything about Onomatopoeia, he took on both Batman and Green Arrow, so that's a pretty you know ballsy move for a guy that's a D-lister. Uh, later on, during Fifty Two, the Odd Man shows up as a pallbearer for Booster Gold. Apparently, nobody mainstream wanted to be Booster Gold's pallbearer. So you get guys like the Odd Man and the Beef Eater. Uh, it doesn't say a whole lot for Odd Man's uh, mainstream status, but at least he kind of shows up. He's doing something. He's uh, out there, out and about. Uh, he also shows up a couple more times. He's in an Ambush Bug uh, special, which, again, doesn't say a whole lot for him. But uh, later on during Cry for Justice, we actually get to see Odd Man fighting Dr. Poison. Which is, which is another awesome name. Maybe I'll talk about Dr. Poison in another episode. But, I mean, he, you know, he's been around since 1978. He's a Steve Ditko creation. Um, you know, just the fact that he stood the test of time with this crazy, ridiculous costume and these, you know, ridiculous, probably not so helpful gadgets, you know, really says a lot for the fact that people kind of dig this character enough that he keeps showing up. And the fact that, you know, we on the DC database and the comic book uh, showcase keep talking about this guy is enough that, you know, he's kind of sparked a little bit of, a, of an interest and he keeps he keeps himself out there or, you know, the creators keep him out there. So, I mean, uh, yeah, kind of kind of an oddball character. But what do you expect when he's named Odd Man? All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me on the first episode of the Obscure Showcase. In the comments, you can let me know of any obscure characters or titles you want me to talk about. I'll see what I can do. Thanks. Bye.